Hey, it's Anfa, and you're watching a tutorial that's streamed live, actually. Not sure if it's a tutorial. I wanted to cover new Dragonfly Reverb plugins because a couple of weeks ago, Dragonfly Reverb 3.2.0 have been released. And even before that, we got uh, more plugins. Before um, the Dragonfly Reverb, at first Dragonfly Reverb was just Dragonfly Reverb, then it was split into Dragonfly Hall Reverb and Dragonfly Room Reverb, and now we've got two new plugins, Dragonfly Plate Reverb and Dragonfly Early Reflections, or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, so there's uh, new stuff to be discovered. And what I want to do is uh, basically demonstrate to you how these reverb sounds, how do these reverbs sound, what do we have to configure in them, and uh, for that purpose I've prepared a... I've slapped together a, a rock track, very quick, quickly done, not, not very tight, but it'll do to demonstrate the reverbs. So uh, let me just play you the track. There is no reverb here. There is delay on the guitar solo. Maybe I'll disable it so we have completely dry signal and, and nothing is obscuring the view. And uh, yeah, let's just listen. I'm testing reverbs again. I'm dancing reverbs again. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. I'm testing, I'm testing reverbs. How do they sound? How do you find these reverbs? You reverbs! Oh, yeah! Shit! So that's the song, and uh, what I've done is I started with uh, AV Drum Kit Black Pearl to make some drums, and I'm gonna play you them. And they're very simple, very simple rock pattern. And uh, I used the multi channel version, so I have all the different elements separated like the kick, the snare, the hi hat, toms. Actually, I don't use toms. Uh, or I do once. Symbols and percussion, which I don't use either. And uh, let's try and use these uh, new reverb plugins to spice up the whole thing. So uh, maybe let's go with the snare first. And we're probably gonna drown this thing in reverb. So right now we have Dragonfly, Early Reflections, Hollow Reverb, Plate Reverb, and Room Reverb. Hall Reverb and Room Reverb, you probably know them already. So let's maybe go with the plate reverb, which is one of the new ones. And this is how it looks. And let's just play it. Maybe we can solo our snare so we don't have anything else. So all wet. This is how the reverb sounds. We have stereo width. Pretty delay, pretty obvious. Decay time. Low cut. Or high pass. So we're removing some of the lows. And also high cut. So, no sorry, that's high pass, this is low pass. Let's replay this track. So we have dampening, which is like a very, very gentle low pass that's being like iterating over the tail. So it's, it's like you have carpets in the walls and stuff. Also, there is three different algorithms, reverb types, simple, nested, and tank. Uh, maybe let's try and check, check them out. Simple. Yep, 
you may notice there is no size um, control like in the Dragonfly Hall reverb. So that's nested, and now let's try tank. This is pretty lush. The simple is... It is, it is indeed simple. That's way more, like, rich, and the tank is... even more full and... Alrighty, let's try and find something that will actually work for this snare in, in the musical context. Okay, that's some very simple but pretty cool ambience for the snare. I like it. Let's listen to this with the whole drum kit. Yeah, I like that. Okay, let's go maybe try the kick drum. You know, kicks are notoriously difficult to add reverb to because, well, you have lots of low end and reverbs tend to mess that up and just remove all of the punch from the drums. But maybe let's try the early reflections reverb. Dragonfly early reflections. Because maybe, maybe we can get some like short and delicate ambience for this kick so it doesn't sound so dry without destroying the low end. Maybe let's try a wet. All right, so it seems we have... There's a question mark. This is a free audio reverb based on Freeverb 3. Ah, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Didn't know that, that was there. Uh, so we have a bunch of presets, and... Well, these are our, like, hard-coded algorithms for how the early reflections are are spreading and, and basically distributed. So... One thing I notice is that all of them sound seem to be pretty, like, much more noticeable in the left ear. Maybe that's not going to be the same on speakers. You can actually try that. No. I think these still sound a little bit, like, louder in the left ear. Mm. It's not like something completely terrible, but it is noticeable, so maybe would need to tweak that somehow. Okay, let's see. What if we mix this up? Oh, I need to tweak my gate because it's also doing some weird stuff, so um, hold on a second. All right, that's better. And yeah, now we shouldn't have so much stuttery weirdness. Yeah, I see that the in the chat that people say that the the early reflections sound disbalanced to the left on their side too. Yeah, so probably that's something for Michael to address. Uh, I feel like a simple. Panning could already correct that, but of course our um, dry signal will also be panned left, so um, that's going to be a bit weird. But we'll try and see if that can actually help us get the sound we want. 
the interesting thing is we have a size control. I hear some weird clicks. Even if I move this. Huh. I like the sound of this. Ha! Huh. The funny thing is, when I look at the level meters, look at the level meters as I change the width. So at 50%, we have higher levels in the right ear, and as I go up, they equal out, and then the left ear takes over and starts to dominate. So we can mitigate the uh, the panning of disbalance, the, the stereo image disbalance with this width control. And interestingly, at the at the width at uh, at with the width at one hundred fifty percent, I don't feel like it's exactly um, louder in the left ear. They are so different right now that I don't really perceive it that way. And very interestingly, we have low cut and high cut, so we can band pass this whole thing. Okay, the I I kind of wish we could go much higher with this low cut. Like I would like to be to be like high pass this at 10k and see what happens, just for creative reasons, because that's gonna give us natural sounds. But sometimes you don't want that. For sure, I'm going to use this low cut at maximum. Okay. Now, this is pretty subtle, but look how more natural this kick sounds right now if we have this early reflection reverb added. This is dry. And now I'll enable it. Dry. wet. It sounds to sound, it sounds like it's actually in a space other, as opposed to floating in, in vacuum. Vacuum. <laughs> I think we have our kick reverb. Let's see how these sound in context of the whole drum kit. All right, this starts to sound nice. Mm. Rob Vandenberg says, use a bus? Uh, hmm. uh, yeah, we could use a bus. So like bus would give us a more natural sound probably and make it easier on the CPU and faster to set up. But I want to have some fun. I don't care about this sounding particularly really realistic. I just want to explore the reverb sounds and uh, yeah, have fun. What I what jumps at me right now is that the cymbals and the hi hat sound particularly dry right now, especially compared to the snare and kick, which now have some reverb. So let's maybe solo the cymbals and add some dragonfly plate. We have some presets there already, also. Let's high pass this. This sounds pretty nice, I must say. This is really cool. Mm, you may say I've reversed the stereo um, of the C symbols because they were like more in the right ear when I played the ride. And I wanted it to be the left ear because I wanted the the hi hat to be in the right ear, as you can see here. So it's like you're listening to a drum kit that's sending in front of you. So in that case, 
you would look and the hi hat would be on your right hand side and the right symbol would be on your left hand side. So I wanted to reflect that. There are two schools of mixing drums. One is from the perspective of a listener in front of the drum kit and the other is from the perspective of the drummer. And I think it makes much more sense to be mixing it from a perspective of a listener than from a performer. That's just what I think. Oh my goodness, sorry. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, the symbols sound nice. Let's go for the hi-hat now. Maybe let's use the Dragonfly Room Reverb. I don't use that much. Maybe I should. Mm, okay, let's maybe isolate the hi-hat. All right, and you can see we're splitting the signal into stereo. Maybe I'll do that before the fader. Let's do it all wet. And here, the hi-hat is kind of naturally in the left ear. Oh, let's maybe bypass this. Or it's also maybe it's a bit skewed to the left. I don't know. We have some, we have a lot of presets in this plugin. There's small, medium, large halls and effects. A bunch of presets, really. Well, wow, that's really cool. Not really what I want. Let's low cut this. Let's uh, cut the lows. Is this wait wait? Is this boost? Does it only boost or? Oh wait, it's gonna only affect the. Oh, that's weird. Look. Okay, I see. So the low boost, boost, low boost. Can you up the volume of the DAW a bit? Yeah, sure. I'm going to bring it up by six decibels. Is that better? Wow, I really like this band passy resonance there we've created with a low boost. It's really cool, wow. Not natural at all. I guess this section is for like, especially these, this low boost is for like, simulating a re room standing waves, which emphasize low frequencies often. I'm not sure I want to use this in that way. But I sure like this sound. It's strange. Doesn't fit the track though, I think. What about adding it to the drawing level? All right. Let's see how it works in the context of the whole drum kit. Okay, a little problem I see is that we are adding the reverb and then we are panning the whole thing, which sounds weird. So I'm going to add a Calf Stereo Tools plugin before the reverb. And I'm going to edit pin connections so that it receives the whole thing in both channels. I'm going to reset this panning thing here. Let's solo the, the hi-hat again. And I'm going to pan our hi-hat before the reverb so that the reverb already operates on panned hi-hat. So what we do is use the balance. It is either input or output. We're not doing any other stuff, so it doesn't matter. So now I'm panning my hi-hat before it hits the reverb. And then I'm reset the panning here so that our reverb can naturally like you know reflect how it would sound if the hi-hat was standing to the right and we're not 
creating a weird situation where the hi-hat was in the center, but the reverb is in the right, or they're both in the right with that. And it's weird. It's not natural. I think this will sound better. All right. You can see that these reverbs, they are different. So this is not a natural sound of a real room. This is creative uh, use of reverb. Mm, all right. What can we do else with these drums? I don't know. I think the drums are good. Let's maybe go to the guitars. I'm going to solo them. They would probably need a bus. So let's uh, save the project first and right click on the group. Yes, on the group header, add new subgroup bus. And now we have a bus for our guitars, which is cool. Now this is rhythm guitars, okay? Rhythm. I never know how do you how do you spell rhythm? Uh, I think there are two spellings and I just confuse both. I think the early reflections could be really nice for this, but we could also try Dragonfly. We could also try the plate in this short setting. Let's try the plate maybe. Short, I mean little decay time. It's interesting because this simple mm, uh, Z rhythm is spelled wrong on purpose. Okay, so I'm type I'm spelling rhythm good. Okay, thanks. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> uh, it's interesting. This simple reverb sounds sounds to me like a real space, though it's very hard to dry walls in a closed close room. Not sure what I want to do with this. Not sure if that's what I want to do with this. I think, I think the nested algorithm sounds better for this. Tank seems too rich for me. It It's creating a mess because there's too much input signal. Like the, the input is too wideband, I think. And uh, it just overpowers it. But maybe that's just the way you know. I like this. Let's see how they sound with the drums. Aren't they... Isn't the DAW too loud right now? I am a little bit afraid uh, like that it might be too loud. What do you say? Okay, no one is nobody's saying that it's too loud, so I guess it's okay. <laughs> Rob Vandenberg says, I like loud music. <laughs> Dustbox the North says, nah, it seems fine to me. Okay. So I'll just reduce my uh my ears. <laughs> oh, I also moved this reverb before fader. It doesn't really matter because it's not a distortion or compression that it, it doesn't depend on the input level, but I just like it that way. I think we made the guitars a bit quieter. We shouldn't have. 
don't know. Let's try the solo guitar now. All right. Let's maybe use our good old Dragonfly Hall reverb in this one. It's the green one. By the way, maybe you haven't noticed. I got a t-shirt. It's a Dragonfly t-shirt. Hey. Isn't that cool? You can see that there's the logo, but it's green. And I also have a green screen behind me, so that doesn't go through. Let me show you. That's how it looks without the green screen. Uh, Rob Van Berg says, I have one too. Yeah, because you're also uh, <laughs> mentioned as a co-creator of this plugin. Right here you can see by Michael Willis and Rob Van Der Berg. Okay, let's add the reverb to this guitar solo then. Maybe let's see all dry first. I'm really not sure what these are doing. Oh, that sounds different. Okay, so it seems like we have like more pronounced transients with this thing, uh, with the fuse being low. I like that. It actually almost sounds dry. I like this. Let's see our rhythm guitars with solo with drums. Let's see how that sounds together. Okay, we're getting it a bit too wet, but that's okay. Uh, Dustbox North says, oh man, I gotta get coffee, but I want to continue watching Mad Boy stream, and yet I don't want to get my MacBook wet. Get your MacBook wet with reverb then. No, no, don't get your MacBook wet. They are, they are not, not easy to fix. Watch Lewis Rossman if you need to know how to fix your wet MacBook. Alrighty. Now <laughs> we have a bass guitar also. And this will remind you of a certain band, probably. <laughs> oh, it's it's amazing what GuitarX plugins can do. And you know, all, on all of these guitars, I used only GuitarX Amplifier X. And let me disable it. Okay, this bass is pretty quiet, so I'm gonna I'm gonna temporarily. Increase the trim on it. Wait. I love even the dry sound of this great guitar. I want to sample it one day to into an F SFZ instrument. I don't know how, however, because that's going to be a big task. And now if we add GuitarX Amplifier X, what we get is... Corn. Well, that's crunchy. I don't know if we need any reverb in this, but we're gonna try. Let's try the early reflections. 
Oh, it's not being split into a stereo signal. You can see we have left channel fed into the reverb and left channel fed out with the right channel not being used at all. And we don't want that, so I'm going to press on the base on the track title and disable strict I.O., which will now allow it to split the signal and create this, make this stereo. And now we have stereo width in our reverb, which is nice. We want that, usually. However, monophonic reverb also has its place and it has a very interesting sound specifically, especially on guitars at times. Let's play around with wet reverbs. And see. Garage band, oh! <laughs> I wish, I really wish we could go higher with this low cut. I would want to go to 500 hertz with this without, like, really, I would want. So, uh, yeah. Now let's play with the width. Oh yeah, this sounds much more present in the left ear now. And this sounds more balanced, but also very narrow. Not a big problem, this is just bass guitar. Well, I think this is pretty cool. Okay, I think our bass is done. Let's go to the lead vocal. I'm testing reverbs again! What do you say? Let's try maybe the played reverb. Oh, that's weird. I'm testing reverbs again. I'm testing. Okay, it sounds good, but it looks weird. Let's close it and open it again. Let's see what happens. Okay, now it's good. Uh, also, we again we have this in mono, so I need to click on the track ti title, track name, and disable strict I/O. Now it's splitting the signal, and we have nice stereo. I'm testing reverbs again. Carlos Valdez says, I wonder where you get those plugins. Uh, actually, I've installed these from Manjaro repositories. There is the package called Dragonfly Reverb, and you get version 3.2.0, which is the most current one, which is great. I'm testing! But I will also link to the GitHub page and... Uh, yeah, the GitHub page, where you can download the builds if you don't have them in the repositories or something. I'm testing reverbs again! Woo! Yeah! I'm testing reverbs again! <laughs> oh, that's interesting. That's weird, but... I'm testing reverbs again! Sounds kind of slapbacky. I'm testing reverbs again! It has a very weird, um, it has this weird, like, feedback loop. I'm testing reverbs again! In the background, which I don't like that much. You can see it's like we have two, val two um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go with an acid. I don't think I like I'm it. testing reverbs again! I'm testing reverbs again! I'm testing reverbs again! Woo! Yeah! I'm testing reverbs again! Woo! Yeah! I'm testing reverbs again! Oh. I think that's okay. That's fine. This is nice. Uh, now we have background vocals, and let's make a ba 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 let's make another submix bus for them. Right click on the group mm, header and go add new subgroup bus. Oh, subgroup. Oh, I think it was called submix at some point. 
Maybe I misremembered that. Now we have both of them fed into this bus. Testing reverbs. Let's cover that one reverb. Maybe let's go with the room again. I don't think, I think we used it only once before. Testing reverbs. low boost I like the sound of this low boost I kind of wish we could go up with this uh, frequency maybe not make it low boost but the boost in general and, and be able to do it higher It's a bit quiet, these background vocals. They don't punch through that much. Well, this mix isn't perfect. <laughs> or the input material isn't perfect at all. It was quickly done, just as a demonstration. All right, I think let's just play this again and listen how it sounds. I'm testing reverbs again. Woo! Yeah! I'm testing reverbs again. Okay, I think that's uh, that covers it. I wanted to show you the new Dragonfly reverbs, and uh, you've got them. Maybe one thing I could do is go to the GitHub. This is the uh, Dragonfly reverb website. MichaelWillets.github.io slash Dragonfly reverb. I wonder what happens if you just go to his website and does it exist? It's oh, it's empty. Okay. Anyway, that's the website, and you can uh, get a T-shirt <laughs> or download the plugins. They are available for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, as well as source code, of course, because they are free and open source software which I think is fantastic because we don't really have much, many open source audio plugins available for all major platforms. A lot of them are very cool and very good, but only available for Linux. And I think it's good that we also make them available for Mac OS and Windows because I think that helps people get accustomed to these plugins. And then if they come to Linux and they see, oh, I'm already using these plugins and they work here as well. Oh, nice. I feel more at home here. And I think that's that's a good thing. Uh, Rob Vandenberg says, maybe Anfa can post the lyrics in the description. And Aporov Singh says, Anfa always has the best lyrics. <laughs> Pastelcom Guinea asks, is this video about reverbs? Yes, this is a video about Dragonfly reverb plugins. There are four of them in the bundle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> four plugins. Alrighty. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, I hope you found this video useful or interesting. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, also, huge thanks to all the people who support my work financially. If you, dear viewer, would also like to join them, 
please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa uh, where you can give me a buck or two for the coffee. Oh, I actually have one more sip. Let me... Ah, nice. Let me get that. Mm, yes, and you know what? I've also prepared myself a freaking end screen. <laughs> so I can put the end screen links clickable things here with the Patreon and the new video you'll see and it's all gonna be cool and great and fine, right? <laughs> Yay. Now I'm gonna post the link to the reverbs and the pinned comment in the video description and now just go grab these and make some music. Also, I'll include download for this whole session because why not? You can remix it if you want. Bye. Oh my goodness, where do I click? Where do I click? Where is this? I can't find the right button. Oh, there.